What's up? Hey, uh, mom and dad, I love you forever ever, my sister. Hi, boy boy. No, Sharky, that's the camera. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that animation clip. My name's Howard Wimshurst. I'm a professional animator and animation producer from London. And in this little video, I'm gonna try and reveal the whole process of how we made it. So Chad Rivera contacted me asking if it was possible to make an animation clip for his YouTube channel. He had already made a rudimentary storyboard which laid out his idea. I thought this idea had a lot of potential. It looked like a really fun idea. Manipulating water, just like in the sort of avatar, it had some nice displays of character. I, I really liked the idea of like having like a pet shark. I think that's just a cool idea. On a project, I want to choose something that is fun, that, that is going to be creative. My first impression of Chad was like, wow, this guy is really authentic, really energetic, a lot of positive vibes, you know. He had a lot of respect for the medium of animation, which um, I really appreciate. I came to admire the fact that he, he really knows who he is. He literally wears his Chamorro heritage on his sleeve and I have a lot of respect for that. Uh, he makes music, vlogs, he does like food reviews and stuff. So it's it's a good, it's good fun. I'm subscribed to him and you know, I always uh, like to see what he's putting out on the channel. So you'll notice I've been using the word we, not I. And that's because going into this project, I wanted to take on more of a producer director role. I looked through my network to see if there was an artist I could bring on to the team. There was this animator who came onto my radar about a year ago, and he was making some really impressive entries for the Animator Guild monthly challenges. He went by the name of Blazel. I could see that he had a really deep understanding of 3D space. Uh, he could rotate objects and characters around almost effortlessly and he understood dynamic movement. So I contacted him and there was a little problem with file compatibility because I use TV Paint and he uses Clip Studio Paint. The way we got around this is we would transfer files by exporting them as high quality image sequences and then re-importing them into our software of choice. So that's how we kind of got around that. So for pre-production, we built a design of Chad's character. And this was fairly easy because it was based on the real person. So we had a great frame of reference to go off of. There was plenty of footage from Chad's channel that we could look at uh, to see what he looked like. We had a little bit of back and forth of uh, how the character should look. And I'm really happy with uh, where we ended up with that. We knew going into this that tattoos were going to be a difficult thing to do because tattoos in frame by frame animation are notoriously difficult. Um, it's detail that's wrapped around a 3D surface, it's intense detail at that and you have to update it with every frame. So we knew that but it was one of these things that was so integral to, to Chad's character. Blazel had to hand draw them every frame. Whenever it rotates, changing it, updating it, it's it's tricky, so I think he deserves a lot of credit for that. And then moving on to production of where Blazel was creating the roughs for the animatic and then moving into keyframe animation, the mastery of three-dimensional angles, the composition with the low horizon line, and of course, the water and how he sculpted these keyframes of the water. That being said, I mean, I was just itching to get onto this project to work on some of the animation myself. I think that's one of the flaws I have. It's hard for me to delegate on such a fun, interesting project. I just want to get hands on with it. Blazel, you've done an amazing job, but I just want to, you know, I want to have a crack at this. I want to do little bits of it here and there. So I did uh, some of the character animation at the start of the clip and also some of the character animation at the end of the clip. 
Character animation is one of those things that I don't have, I don't spend as much time on typically, so I want to keep my practice there. And also just building upon the foundations that Blazil had drawn with the keyframes, enhancing them, making them flow. And so I ended up spending a little bit more time on that than I had first thought. If you're thinking of making a waterbending animation, I recommend that you approach it in the order of forces. So what is affecting what? We have this waterbending technique where the character, Chad, seemed to be controlling the water. So I would draw Chad's character first and then I would draw the water because that's in the order of which it's being affected. Chad is affecting the water. And it's the same thing if you're doing like a fight scene or something. The one that's affecting the fight, that's the one you animate first. So the one throwing the punches, you animate the, the guy throwing the punches first, and then you animate the character being hit, you animate them afterwards. Just approaching it in that order, it really helps. With the character animation itself and what the body's doing, we wanted the character to move like water. So we were looking a lot at Tai Chi, the energy moving through the body and flowing, and it just complements water very much. So we were looking at a lot of Tai Chi footage and getting inspiration from that. It was quite a big surprise to me how tricky it is to render water. Because of the reflective nature of water, you have to take it through at least three shading passes. You have to do your flat colors, then your shadows and your highlights. And in addition to that, I also layered on extra effects with uh, gradient brushes in TV Paint and also using some blending modes and experimenting with blending modes to make those colors really pop. So there were a lot of different layers at play in the water effects. You kind of carry on animating when you're rendering water because the highlights and shadows are always updating as the water is changing and morphing. The camera angle of the shot actually changing as well, so where the camera is moving on top of this web. So it was quite complex. As I was rendering this water, I had to continually update uh, where the light was hitting, I had to keep on calculating it. And so it was a fun challenge and it was, it was challenging. So on my second monitor, so as I was rendering this water, I had a, just a picture of a barrel wave. And just that picture alone gave me so many insights into how the light behaves. The water is built up in these kind of layers of animation, these passes, where we had the overall structure first of this thing that goes round and loops round like that. We started with that, but then I also drew over the top of that these extra currents, these smaller currents that were flowing in the same directions where I would get to the end of one pass and then go back and add another line to it, add another line right running up that wave. And I would just animate that line. I'd animate that line running up the wave, twisting around. I'd come back to the start and I'd animate another line running up the wave just behind. You know, that builds complexity over time. peak of the wave there are these little, um, this spray that the wind carries off of the wave and I absolutely love that. I love the look of that spray. It's just one at a time, just approach it one at a time if you want. We had just some rough drawings of like just a lot of these particles and we weren't really keeping track of them. You move from bigger picture where you're just looking at how it looks overall in each of the keyframes. You move from that down into the details and in the details you are actually keeping a track of each particle and making sure that each one is, is moving in a way that is also cohesive with the overall flow of the wave. Nowadays I always take my animation through a compositing pass. It's never ready just in TV Paint, ready for me to export. I always want to do something to it in After Effects. And in this case it was of course adding the backgrounds and then kind of moving the Photoshop backgrounds around 
so that it's uh, worked with this hand-drawn camera movement. So painting the backgrounds and making colour choices, this is something that I actually did surprisingly late in the production and it, it just came down to studying reference and looking at the colours and the tones and the values that you will find in tropical locations and I was looking at Guam but yeah, it took a few different attempts. At first I tried this pastel color and that didn't really give the correct effect. I tried a sunset color scheme and I just thought, mm, no, it's not, it's not a sunset. I felt like actually daytime colors and having those blues worked really well with the orange tones of tanned skin. The, the orange and teal tones complement each other very well. Also just added a lot of clouds. I really like these big fluffy clouds that you can find in these tropical islands. These lovely fluffy clouds appear over islands. It's something to do with the weather system. So I wanted to have just a lot of them. As many clouds as I could fit into there and have them do all these crazy kind of things. Exaggerate it. You might as well, right? It's animation. You might as well exaggerate it a bit. I gotta show you this background because uh, this was a really really long background and I brought it into the compositing and it wasn't even long enough so I made it even longer. <laughs> For my Patreon supporters, I'm going to be dropping a video very soon that will be taking you through five years of my sketchbook progress. So you'll be able to see how my sketches in my sketchbooks has progressed over five years of learning. Because it's so vulnerable, I never thought I would be showing anyone. I want that to be only for my true supporters. So I'm gonna be putting that on Patreon. So make sure you look out for that video when it drops. If you wanna be one of those people, uh, the Patreon link will be down in the description. Also, if you want to learn the basics of animation. There's drawing principles, animation principles, filmmaking principles, and these are all really important for being able to make something like this. Now, if you want to learn those principles, I've made a full course called Getting Started in 2D Animation. Uh, I will link to it down below. So I want to thank Blazel very much for working with me on this, and thank you to Chad Rivera for making this possible. Really cool ch YouTube channel. You can check out the full animation on his channel. Alright, that's the end of the video. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.